and welcome back to walking through the word today we're going to be looking at first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 through 11 so if you have your bibles open them up with me as we walk through the word together as we continue in first thessalonians we have to remember that the chapter break between chapter 4 and chapter 5 is not a break in a thought process or a, in a line of thinking in fact, Paul wants us to understand that what he previously said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 is directly connected to what he's about to say here in chapter 5. Now remember, uh, the chapter breaks, the verse breaks are not spirit-inspired. It was supposed to be one continuous thought. So we cannot assume that there is a break in the line of reasoning that Paul was making between chapter 4 and chapter 5. It's a continuation. Notice here the word now. That actually in the Greek is the word day. And day is a really important word. It's a connective word. It's a conjunction between uh, two thoughts. So Paul here is not making a break in his thought process. He's actually expounding upon and furthering his discussion of the previous topic. And what we notice in the previous walking through the word is he was talking about not only the resurrection of the dead believers, but also of the catching up of the church and the return of Jesus Christ. So when he goes into these verses, when he goes into this thought process, he's expounding upon the reality of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a different passage of scripture. It's not a different line of thinking. It's the same line of thinking. So when he says now... He's actually referring back to his previous statements. He's referring back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. So now concerning, concerning what? Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, right? So previously before he wanted to... Uh, he didn't want the brothers to be uninformed about the those who were dying prior to the second coming of Jesus because they were well aware of the promise of the second coming of Jesus. But what they were not aware or what they were grieving over was that there were brothers and sisters dying prior to the second coming of Jesus. And so they had a sense of hopelessness. They thought, oh my goodness, they're dying without knowing or seeing the second coming of Jesus. So he writes them and says, now concerning these times or the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you because they're already informed about this. He says, for you yourselves are fully aware. And that's very important. Fully aware of what? That the day of the Lord. That's really important. The day of the Lord. That's in reference to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, when he talks about uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus when he descends from the heavens and there's uh, a, a, a shout the the voice of a of an archangel the blowing of the trumpets and all of that is in reference to the second coming of Jesus and he tells them concerning the times and the seasons you're not uninformed about that you have no need to have anything written to you because you yourselves are fully aware you're you're knowledgeable in this area and he says that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Now, again, we have to be very careful when he says like a thief in the night. What is in reference to this specific passage? Some people believe that it is in reference to uh, the second coming of the Lord. Others believe that it's in reference to a secret rapture. Um, if you can go back and listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, I think the scriptures are pretty clear that it's not a secret rapture. But the, th the coming like a thief in the night is in reference to unbelievers. When Jesus comes back, those who are not waiting, those who are not anticipating, those who are not expecting the Lord, of Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to return, they, they're going to feel like it's sudden, like it comes out of nowhere, comes like a thief in the night. When you're asleep, you're not expecting a thief to break into your home and to rob you. That's how the Lord is going to return. It's going to be sudden and unexpected for the unbeliever. Pay attention to what verse 3 says. While people are saying there is peace and security, then, and this is really important, then 
sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. So the labor pains here, sudden destruction here, that's all in reference to being like a thief in the night. The Lord, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is like a thief in the night. People are going to think that there's peace and security, that they're going to be well, and that there's nothing to be worried about. Then when they're at the point where it seems like everything's fine, then sudden dest destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. And I, I know exactly what Paul is referencing here. My wife has had four kids of her own. And every single time her contractions come, they come suddenly and without expectation. A woman who's pregnant, who is ready to give birth, experiences labor pains. And, but these labor pains come out of nowhere. Uh, there's no reason or rhyme or uh, logical understanding of why these pains come all of a sudden. Nothing causes them. They just, they're just part of the reality of the pregnancy. Well, the coming of the Lord, right? Because we are, ourselves know fully about the day of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. We are well aware. But those people, while the people, the unbelievers, the people who are saying there is peace and security, those are the ones that are not expecting the Christ to return. Because when Christ returns, it's judgment, it's destruction of the wicked, it's destruction of his enemies, it's destruction of those who have persecuted the saints. And he says, and they will not escape. Who is this they here? Is it not the unbeliever? Those who do evil and wickedness, those who will be separated from the sheep and be put into the category of goats, those who did not do according to the will of God. Indeed, and remember, this is all in reference to Paul's previous statements about the dissension of the Lord Jesus, the resurrection of the dead saints and the catching up of the church. This is all in reference to one another. They're not separated thoughts or they're not separated lines of thinking. It's all one thought process. And he's informing them about that coming of the Lord. In verse 4, it says, But you, this is you, Christian, you are not in darkness. Just like the unbeliever is in darkness. They're not expecting the Lord Jesus Christ to come like a, de a thief in the night. We're not in darkness. We are not in darkness. But you are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, brothers, for that day. What day? What day is this in reference to? The second coming of Jesus. His coming like a thief in the night. For that day to surprise you like a thief. Notice that. It's not going to surprise you like a thief. Why not? Verse 5, this word here, for, is also very important. It's a, it's a word that connects these two because it's an explanation of why it's not going to surprise us. For, or because, you, brothers and sisters, you are all children of light. So because we're not in darkness, but children of light light then the day that day of the lord will not surprise you like a thief you see the line of reasoning here from paul this is not a secret rapture this is the second coming of the lord for you are all children of the of light children of the day and that's so important we are not of we are not of the night or of the darkness if truly christ dwells within us if truly the spirit dwells in us then we will not be taken aback we will not be surprised when jesus christ returns to the earth when the resurrection of the dead happens we we won't be caught off guard from that we will experience the glory of the coming of jesus and we will celebrate and we will treasure that moment because 
We are not children of the night. We are not children of the darkness. We are children of the light. The light of Jesus is in us. And so we anticipate with eagerness the coming of the Lord and come, Lord, quickly. Verse 6. So then, a very important word. These two words annotate the resulting actions of the previous statement. If it's true that we're, we're not going to um, be taken aback when Jesus comes back, if it's true that we are anticipating the Lord Jesus, if it's true that we are children of the light and not children of the darkness, so then, as a result of this, so then let us not sleep. And what does that mean? What does it mean to not sleep? It means to be lethargic, to be um, inactive. It means that we're constantly thinking about the coming of the Lord Jesus. So let us not sleep as others do. Who are these others here? Well, it can either be um, people who claim to be Christians but are not truly Christians, and so they've they're not passionate for the things of God. They're not passionate for the kingdom. Uh, or it can be in reference to unbelievers. So let us not sleep as others do, but let us, right? Us Christians, us Christians, let us keep awake and sober. We are to be constantly vigilant for the coming of the Lord. So don't act like the others. Look at verse 7, 4, or because those who sleep, the unbeliever, the supposed Christian who claims to be of Christ and yet is walking in darkness, for those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. And so there is a correlation between drunkenness and sleepiness. A Christian is not to get drunk. A Christian is not to sleep while we're expecting the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because those, those actions, that character, and, and those practices are practices of the unbeliever. If we are children of the light, we will not sleep and we will not get drunk. Because people of the darkness, people of the night, sleep and get drunk. Verse 8. But since we belong, since we, Christians, belong to the day right not to the night let us be sober minded sober alert awakened vigilant constantly on the lookout constantly on guard let us be sober having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation and indeed what is the salvation that's being referenced here? Is it not the second coming of Jesus? And indeed, I believe it is in reference to the second coming of Jesus. Salvation is not just the one act of faith where we put our confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, but it is the whole work of God to bring us into glory so that at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are sober we are having put on the breastplate of faith and love and we've put on for a helmet the hope of salvation so in other words our minds from the helmet our minds are awakened we're alert we're not constantly uh, drunk or asleep in our walk our helmet is guarding our mind and we've constantly thinking about the day of our salvation, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the breastplate here of faith and love. It guards our heart with faith and love. We, we believe not only that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming, but we love him and we love each other. And that is how we do not participate in the things of the night. And to wrap it up in verse 9 through 11, for God, right, for God... Because God has not destined us for wrath. Now, what does he mean by wrath here? 
it's not in reference to the seven-year tribulation. This is in reference already, as we've seen from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and from now these verses, that the wrath is of the second coming of Jesus, where he will destroy the wicked, where he will come upon them suddenly with sudden destruction, as we just read. That is the wrath that God has destined for the unbeliever. But for us, we are not destined for wrath, but to obtain salvation. Salvation of what? Not just justification by faith, not just the forgiveness of sins, but salvation from the wrath of God. This is God's wrath upon the whole world. We are not destined for that, but we have obtained salvation from that wrath through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, and far be it from us that we be asleep, we should not be asleep. But Paul says, if you put your hope, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he returns, and you find that you're in a place of lethargy, you've kind of lost passion, you've lost that excitement for the Lord, you've lost that that zeal for the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ has died for us. Oh, that we would hope that every Christian is awake. That every Christian is participating, is sober-minded, is, is working and toiling for the kingdom. We are to be sober. But even if he returns and we find that we are in a place of lethargy, we've kind of been dismayed and heartbroken we've we've lost that fire and that passion that zeal through jesus christ our lord who died for us we might live in him or with him and of course this asleep could also be in reference to those who have died this is in reference to what he was referencing in first thessalonians the asleep here is not necessarily in reference to those Christians who have lost that zeal, but it could also be in reference to those who have died. So whether you're dead physically or whether you've lost that fire, if you've put your hope, faith, and trust in Jesus Christ, I pray that you have you are awake. That you are awake and that you anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus. Wake up from your sleep. Wake up from your slumber, Christian. Get to work for the kingdom. And then he says in verse 11, almost like he finishes off in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. You know why? Because the one who's asleep, we can quickly find that they're awakened by brothers and sisters who encourage them, who build them up, who build each other up. Christians can fall asleep. And yet if we come uh, to one another and we build each other up, we can easily be awakened to the glory of the Lord Jesus and be reminded of just how important it is, just how important it is to constantly anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus. Do not sleep, brothers. Awaken. Your Redeemer draws nearer and nearer every single day. Continue to work for the, ki the kingdom. Continue to preach the gospel. Do not hold back, brothers and sisters. Work, toil for the kingdom, that we might rejoice in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ at the day of our salvation. When the dead shall rise again, where we are caught up to meet the Lord, we will rejoice then. I love you all very much. I pray that the Lord blesses you and continues to keep you in his loving embrace. Until next time.